Good morning, welcome to another video with Igon and his projects. Today we are working on the 2004 Dodge Ram 1500 4x4 5.7 liter Hemi truck. <laughs> we just picked this truck up. Now this is kind of replacing the F250 for the time being. I'm going to try and do a quick turnaround. I've already ordered a crap ton of parts. I ordered new rims, I ordered new tires, 34 inch tires. I ordered uh, new suspension components with a leveling kit slash lift kit. Uh, we've got a lot of parts coming, we've got a radiator coming, all kinds of good stuff. So, stay tuned, there's going to be a playlist, there's going to be a whole lot. Today, this is the first video of repair on this truck and we are doing a wheel bearing. So, well, wheel bearings. So, it's always recommended to replace your bearings in pairs, so if you do the passenger side, you also do the driver's side and vice versa. Uh, we are using today these Timkins. Oh, you may have noticed in some of my videos, I am a huge fan of Timkin. I've tried a lot of different bearings over the years and in different vehicles. I've, and the Timkins have been by far my favorite. They've been by far the most reliable. They seem to last as long or longer than OEM. So typically OEM has amazing quality. Uh, typically OEM parts are the way to go. They cost a lot more because they're getting a much better quality. A lot of people are gonna hate me when I say that. So we've got a couple of these. Um, they're nice and shiny and new. And we're gonna put these on. These are going to be, they should be a fairly straightforward process. Uh, you've only got three mounting bolts. Uh, it's the five lug, just like the ones you're taking off. If you want to, before you put on all the effort, you can mash these lugs up, make sure they're the right lug size. I would also recommend, because there's so many of these out there and I have ordered wrong ones before, take a lug nut off of your old bearing <clears throat> or wheel hub assembly and slip it on, make sure it's the right thread count, okay? Uh, it kind of sucks if you pull this one out, do all the work, get it all off, and then put the new one in, and then you don't even have lug nuts for it. You gotta run to the store, kind of kind of blows. So that's what we're doing. We're going to go ahead and get started. So quick note too, before we do get started, I looked online to see what kind of, uh, what size axle nut I need to buy for this truck. And I saw a, <laughs> every other link I clicked on, one link would say a 35, the next link would say a 36, the next would say 35, the next 36 and so on. So I bought one of each oh, at the store right now. I got a 36 and a 35. This one fits the 35. Uh, I got the six sided. I didn't get the 12 point. I don't like 12 point. Uh, it's just not as strong. Some people will argue. Uh, what happens is, well, with the six side, you get a lot more surface area to surface area when you're sitting there ripping on it, trying to break it loose. So this one is a 35. I don't know that they're all 35, but mine is indeed a 35. So. We're gonna go ahead and get started, guys. It should be a fairly easy process. Let's go. Start by removing your axle nut. You'll want a long pry bar, two by four, something to hold that tight while you do. Alternatively, put your tire back on without the center cap, lower the truck and pull it off or loosen it while the tire's on the ground. Next, we're gonna go back here. You have two bolts holding your caliper together. You got, or not together, but to the uh, spindle. You're gonna go ahead and pop those off, grab a screwdriver, pry your brake pads off, remove your rotor. Next, we are going to remove your upper, upper ball joint nut. Go ahead and undo that and then kind of knock it loose. Uh, I don't recommend knocking straight on the threads. Unscrew that castle nut and bang on the castle nut at the end of the bolt that way. And it should uh, work out. You can use a pickle fork, but that tends to rip your boots. So that's typically the way I go with the hammer. Uh, once you get this loose, uh, you might find it kind of seized in place like mine was. I just used a pry bar of sorts and popped that upper control arm, uh, control arm off. All I'm trying to do right now is get that CV axle out of my way because I can't access the bolts with it there. So next we're going to do the tie rod. Same deal. Go ahead and bust it loose. When you get to the bottom, leave the castle nut on and hammer it out and castle nut off, tie rod off, easy peasy lemon squeezy, put your hardware back on so you don't forget where it goes. Now we're going to attack the lower ball joint, same thing as all the others, the only thing different is you're not going to bang on the castle nut to get it out, 
uh, you're going to try and shock load the metal around it and when that doesn't work you can move to the top and kind of bang it down that worked out just fine for me and it doesn't mean it's going to work out for you but it did for me indeed uh, just bang around a little bit until it finally drops once it drops uh, well you should have much better access you would like to hope all right, so I got that bottom nut off, but the control arm didn't drop enough, so now we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower shock mounting bolt, easy peasy, and then of course your sway bar end link. You can do either top or bottom. Top was easier to access for me, so I removed that. Now that all of your hardware is free, you can drop that control arm a lot more, and that'll allow you to wiggle that CV axle out and your knuckle down and off. There we go. All right, as far as breaking the bolts loose for the hub, that was a little bit more difficult with nothing to hold the, the knuckle together. So there you go, you got your foot. Uh, use what you got and break those bolts loose. Nothing you can't do. I am an office dude now for work. I do not have any muscle. If I can do this, you can do it too. All right, take all three bolts out. And now you are free. Pick it up, kick your old hub bearing wheel assembly out of the way and put it right back down on your new one you guys are doing fantastic we're just about ready to finish up here going to go ahead and line everything up with that dust shield put your three bolts in and again kind of hard to torque these down to spec with uh it not being installed but you got to do what you got to do use your body parts to your advantage as always step on what you got to step on and get in the way here we go check it out boom 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 gotta get into it sometimes uh, go ahead and torque these down to manufacturer specifications and once you do that guys we are almost done already yeah there we go okay I'm going to take a wire brush to the CV axle and then I'm going to take some brake clean to get the dust off and then I'm going to take some grease and I'm just going to grease these splines up nice and purdy. Uh, if you've watched my videos you know that I do like my grease. It's going to be easier for you to get this back together if you have a jack under the control arm so you can raise and lower at will. Uh, get that lower ball joint in and then wiggle in that CV axle. Put the retainer nut on bottom to hold it in place. Same with your axle nut when you get there. Once you got those nuts on both places, it's going to be a lot easier for you to continue moving. Uh, I'm just getting that nut on as far as I can. All right, from here, same thing. I'm picking up on the knuckle and hand threading that uh, lower nut on as much as I can. All right. Your order of operation, I don't think really matters. I just kind of pick and chose, and I went to the shock, lower shock mount next. After that, I hit that uh, stabilizer bar, and now I'm going for the tie rod in, and finally, I'm going up to the upper control arm ball joint. Uh, pick and choose what you want to do. There may be an easier order. There may not be. I wasn't really attacking this with a plan. I was just kind of attacking it and that's where I ended up. All right, after you got everything pretty tight, I went ahead and went to my axle nut. Again, use the same pry bar to hold it tight. You can put some lug nuts in place if you're worried about the threads. I've never damaged threads doing this before. I wasn't too worried about it, and I did not damage any threads doing this this time either. The only time you're going to really damage the threads is if you're really beaten on it, uh, but there's nothing really moving per se, so yeah, it's fairly safe. Tighten that to manufacturer specifications as well. Give it a twist, make sure you're good. Now you're gonna go down and tighten your tie rod or whichever order you're going. Make sure it's as tight as the manufacturer wants. Same with your lower ball joint. I uh, used a pair of vice grips to hold the uh, stud tight. Same with your stabilizer bar. And now we are gonna put our brake caliper back on. We are just decompressing the brake pads here, the pistons so that we can slide it back over our rotor. And it's gonna slide in just like butter. Ooh, yeah, just like that. All right, you got those same two bolts, one upper, one lower. Sorry I didn't get a better picture. Uh, I was kinda in a hurry this morning when I was putting this together. 
and you're just going to tighten them down to manufactured torque specs as well upper and lower there we go all right now it's time to put your tire on check it out guys we're pretty much there get your tire slide it in you got five brand new studs to put your lug nuts on right there hand tighten them i only left this in the video to really annoy those of you that really care about star pattern slash circles slash whatever the heck you want to do i've never had a problem doing it in any way shape or form in any pattern so do as you wish i don't really care uh however you're raised i don't care anywho there we go guys All right guys, wheel bearing hub assembly is changed on this truck. This only took an hour. That, that was it, just an hour. So it is very doable in your garage, under a shade tree out front. I'm not a mechanic, keep that in mind. I have no professional experience. I don't have any uh, professional training. I'm just a guy that figures crap out. Uh, buy yourself a service manual oh, for your vehicles. It'll have all your torque specs. It'll have most of your torque specs in there. Uh, if you actually read it, this can be very, very, very beneficial to you for uh, doing your own repairs. Uh, I have them for all my vehicles, but I am guilty of not actually reading them. <laughs> uh, I've gotten to the point where I just attack it and hope for the best, and uh, that, that's where we are. I use that for torque specs more than anything, uh, but it is a very handy tool. Pick yourself one up. If you guys liked what you saw, leave me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Check out my channel. This is the first one in the Dodge 1500 playlist. There's going to be plenty more, I assure you. We've got radiator coming. We've got a lift, lift, uh, lift slash level kit, whatever you want to call it. we got new shocks all the way around. Uh, we got uh, quite a few projects coming up, guys. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.